Okay, so in this series, I'm doing like a fusion of two topics. And in this particular one, I'm looking at surds and the area of a trapezium. And at the end of it, I'm gonna do an exam style question, which really should remind you of like the problem solving questions you might come across when you look at full exam papers. So for the first half, we're gonna look at the area of a trapezium, and we're gonna try and find the area of each of these trapeziums that we have here. So the first one, you'll notice that we've got these two sides which are parallel to each other. Hopefully you remember the formula for this. The formula for this is a half bracket a plus B H. Now what this actually means is you take the parallel sides, which are A and B, so I'm going to indicate that they're parallel, you add them together, you then half it and multiply it by the height. Now sometimes people don't like the way that formula looks, so if you want to think of it as A plus B divided by 2 and then multiplied by the height, then that's also fine. And you'll notice that this A plus B divided by 2, this is the average of the parallel sides. So. Well, let's apply this formula to these ones that we've got here. We've got one, two, three, four trapeziums. Now, I can tell it's a trapezium because I've got two sides that are parallel and the other ones are not parallel to each other. So the first thing that it wants us to do is I'm going to use probably this second version of the formula. I'm going to take the values of A and B, which are these two. I'm going to do 7 plus 11 and I'm going to divide it by 2. And then I need to multiply it by the height. Now, something I didn't mention before is that the height always needs to be perpendicular to the parallel sides. So in this case, the 5 is not going to be the height, only the 3 is. So I'm going to do that the area of this trapezium, A, is equal to 7 plus 11 divided by 2. That's 18 divided by 2 multiplied by 3. Well, 18 divided by 2 is 9, so it is 9 times 3, which is 27 centimetres squared. Okay, and then this next one that we've got over here, the only difference this time is that the parallel sides are these two that we have here. So I'm just going to indicate that they are parallel. That means that they are A and B. And remember the height is the perpendicular distance between those, which is then going to be 5 that we have over here. So the 13 is not needed. So the area is going to be the A plus the B divided by 2, and then it's going to multiply by the height. So I'm going to do the 15 plus the 3, that's 18 divided by 2 times by 5, that's 9 times 5, which is 45 centimetres squared. Now this last one doesn't necessarily look like a traditional kind of trapezium, but it is a trapezium because we've got two sides that are parallel and it's a quadrilateral, and we've been told here what this perpendicular height is. Now I wouldn't use this or this, but they haven't even given it to me in this question. So the area of this trapezium is going to be the 6 plus 8 and the 7 plus 2, 6 plus 8 plus 7 plus 2, half that and then we're going to multiply it by 3.5. Well, 6.8 and 7.2, that's going to be 14 on the numerator. 6 plus 7 is 13, and we get 14 divided by 2, which is 7. So it is 7 multiplied by 3.5, that's going to be 24.5. And again, you could check this with a calculator, but I'm just trying to go a little bit speedy here. So 7 times 3.5 is going to be 24.5 centimetres squared. So that's how you find the area of a trapezium. Now the second thing I'm going to blend the trapezium topic with is with thirds. So I've got two slides here recapping some things with thirds and then we'll do some problems. So very quickly, what you can and cannot do with thirds. Well, multiplying and dividing. Let's see what you can do with multiplying and dividing. You might think that the square root of 9 times the square root of 4, I can just multiply the numbers that are inside. The 9 times 4 is 36. Well, let's check if it's true, because we know the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 4 is 2, and 3 times 2 equals 6. Yep, 6 and the square root of 36 are the same. So multiplying and dividing, yes, we can do multiplication. Let's just check division. You might think that you can just divide these, do 100 divided by 4, and we still keep the square root sign. 100 divided by 4 is 25. Yep, that works. So let's just check and see if it works at the top. So 10, 100 square rooted is 10, 4 square rooted is 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Yep, it works because 5 and the square root of 25 are um, equal to each other. So you can do multiplication and division. Now, people usually think that the square root of 16 plus the square root of 4, they think, great, I can just add these numbers that are inside the middle. Let's check if it works. The square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2, but 4 plus 2 is equal to 6, and 6 is not the square root of 20. So we cannot do this process that we have here. You cannot add them together. Now, I think you probably know you're not going to be able to subtract them, but let's just check and see why. So 49 square roots to 7, 25 square roots to 5. We'd probably be predicting that 49 take away 25 would be the square root of 24 if we subtracted the numbers. But 7 take away 5 
is two, so that's not going to work. Let me just quickly change that so it's in the right color. Seven take away five is two, and 24 square rooted is clearly not equal to two, so you cannot add or subtract the numbers inside. You can only do multiplication or division. Now, the other skill that you're going to need to know is how you simplify thirds. Hopefully you remember this from when you've studied this before. What you need to do is you need to split the root 12 up into a square number and a non-square number. It's going to be a square root of 4 and a square root of 3. You can write the multiplication symbol between if you want to, but it isn't necessary because we know that it is there. Now, the square root of 4 is 2, so you just get 2 root 3, and that can't simplify any further. Now, 27, you're going to think of two numbers, and one of them is a square number. It is 9 times 3. The square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 3 we just leave, so it's 3 root 3. Two square numbers that multiply to 8 is going to be 4 and 2, and the square root of 4 is 2, so you get 2 root 2. I'm basically able to do this process of, reverse the, of reversing them because of this law that we've got here. I'm saying like 27 is 9 times 3. I'm kind of splitting it up. And like I said, there could be multiplication symbols in, but you don't have to have them. So 48, you try and think of two numbers that multiply to 48. One of them needs to be a square number. Always pick the biggest square number that you can. This is 16 times 3. The square root of 16 is 4, so you get 4 root 3. Now if you did, say, 4 and 12 instead, you'd find that you could also simplify the root 12. So it would be a longer process because you would have to simplify it twice. 200, you can split into a 100 as one of the square numbers, and the non-square number is 2. The square root of 100 is 10, so it's 10 root 2. And then root 98 is 49 multiplied by 2, and so the square root of 49 is 7, so we have 7 root 2. So we've learned what we can do with thirds and simplifying them. We're just going to do a couple more things. We're going to do adding and subtracting, and then we'll do some multiplication that we've got at the bottom as well. So um, let's have a quick look at this one that we've got at the top. It says simplify the following expressions, adding thirds and non-thirds. So this one, we know that you're not allowed to add them because of this stuff that we've got up here, but we've learned this skill of simplifying. Now to save a bit of time, we've already said that the square root of 200 is 10 root 2. You can see that over here. And the square root of 8 is 2 root 2. Now that we've got them both written like this, I've got 10 of them and 2 of them, so that will simplify to say I've got 12 root 2. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Root 12, we've said, is 2 root 3, so we always want to simplify them if we can. And root 48 is 4 root 3, so it's 2 root 3 plus 4 root 3. We're saying how many root 3s do we have? Well, we've got 6 root 3 overall. Okay, simplify the following expressions. This time, you can only add the thirdy parts together like we did here, and the integers just need to get added separately. So what I'm going to be doing, first of all, is I will do the 3 and the positive 8. 3 plus 8 is 11. And then for the next part, I'm going to be doing the 2 root 7 minus 3 root 7. So I've got 2 minus 3. It gives me minus 1 root 7, which I just write as minus root 7. Now in this one, I have got the integer part. So I've got the four, let's do it in the same color as before. I have the four, take away the two. Four take away two is just two. Now I'm gonna have a look at the next part that I've got, which is going to be the matching ones. I have a positive root five and a plus three root five. That's like a one root five. And I've got three more. So one plus three is four root five. Now, because I can't add the root five and the root six together, that one just kind of hangs out by itself. So at the end, I'm just going to write plus root 6. OK, so it says simplify the following expressions, multiplying thirds, and then we've got some expanding brackets. I've just noticed this one here. I'll change it on the original, though, so you'll have it. That one is supposed to be a multiplication symbol. So let's have a quick think. It's going to say the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. Well, using the law that we had here, you can just multiply the numbers that are inside. So that's going to be the square root of 9 and the square root of 9 is 3. So actually, we could have just skipped that step. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 obviously must just be equal to 3. Now, in this second question that we've got here, we start off by doing the integer part. So the 2 times the 4 gives us the 8. And then we're going to do the third part. It's root 3 times root 3, we've just said that that's 3. So that is 8 multiplied by 3, which is 24. Of course, you can also expand brackets as well. So we're going to use that multiplication law. We're going to do the two times the root 2 times the root 3. You can just multiply those so that you get root 6. And then we've got root 2 times 2 root 2. So we're going to do root 2 multiplied by 2 root 2. Well, the root 2 times the root 2 gives me a 2. 
and I'm multiplying that by 2, so I get 4. So I have root 6 multiplied by 4, which we just write as 4 root 6. Now I'm going to expand these brackets. These two are going to multiply, so I have 2 root 3 times 4 root 3. Well, I have a 2 times 4, which is going to give me an 8, and then a root 3 times a root 3, which is a 3. So this is like an 8 times 3, which is going to give me a 24. And look, we actually did that earlier on. 2 root 3 times 4 root 3 was 24. Now I'll do 2 root 3 multiplied by negative 4, which is minus 8 root 3. So that's everything you need to know about thirds to be able to answer these kinds of questions. Hopefully you've looked at that already, but this is just a quick recap for you. So I'm going to do this example problem, which is an exam style. I think this would be about four marks. It says here, in the quadrilateral ABCD, the sides AB and CD are parallel. So as soon as I have a quadrilateral where I've got one pair of parallel sides, I know that the shape that I'm talking about is a trapezium. And in a second, it's going to be helpful to have a sketch. I'll tell you what, why don't we just do a quick sketch now. Don't worry too much if it's to scale. It's just here for like a visual representation. So it says that AB and CD are parallel. When you do the letters, you always go around the outside, either anti-clockwise or clockwise. It doesn't really matter. So we know that these are the parallel sides. And it tells me that the length of AB is 4 plus root 48. This is 4 plus root 48. And then the length of CD is 10 minus root 12. The perpendicular distance between the sides AB and CD is root 27. So this distance that we've got over here is the square root of 27. The question then says, work out the area of the quadrilateral, give your answer in the form A plus B root 3 centimetres, where A and B are integers. Well, interestingly, this root 3 makes me think that these have been simplified. So my first tip is always going to be to simplify the thirds before you do anything. Simplify the thirds before the calculations. So we know that the area of this trapezium is going to be the A and the B parts added together and then divided by 2. But we'll do some simplifying as well. So it's going to be our 10 minus root 12 plus 4 plus root 48. That is A plus B, A plus B. And then we're going to divide that by 2 like we did previously. So it's going to get divided by 2. And then we're going to multiply that afterwards by the height, which is root 27. So let's do some simplifying. Now root 12, we said earlier on, root 12 is 2 root 3. So I'm going to replace that with minus 2 root 3. I then have the plus 4, and the root 48, we said, was 4 root 3 over here, plus 4 root 3. And I'm going to divide all of that by 2, and then I'm going to multiply it by root 27, which we also said up here was 3 root 3. So I'm now going to simplify by um, collecting these like terms in the numerator together. The integers are the 10 and the plus 4, which is 14. And then I've got minus 2 root 3 plus 4 root 3. Minus 2 plus 4 is just 2, so I have plus 2 root 3 divided by 2, and that's all going to be multiplied by 3 root 3. Well, I can do the half of the 14 to get 7. I'm going to do the divide by 2 and the divide by 2. So I get a 7 plus a root 3, and that is multiplying by 3 root 3. Now, I can't just write it like this, otherwise it looks like just these things are multiplying. So I'm going to put some brackets around this to remind me that I need to expand the brackets. So that's going to be a 7 multiplied by a 3 root 3. That's going to be a 21 root 3. And then I have a root 3 times a 3 root 3. You can always do some extra working out on the side. That is a root 3 multiplied by a 3 root 3. Well, I'm going to have a 3 times by a root 3 and a root 3. Well, those two are going to make another 3. So it's just a 3 times 3, which is just going to be a 9. So that means that we have a plus 9. So all we need to do is make sure that it's written in this particular form. So I'm going to switch the order, and I'm going to say that it is 9 plus 21 root 3 centimetres. And if you want to, you could say that A is therefore equal to 9 and B is equal to 21. Now, I should have said this is going to be in a non-calculator because you could have otherwise just put this thing here in your calculator and it would do it for you. So this is going to come up in a non-calculator one. So I have made one that is kind of similar that I want you to have a go at. Pause the video and have a go and see if you get the same answer that I do. 
Okay, so I'll go a little bit faster. So it's a quadrilateral with a pair of parallel sides, and it says that e, F, e, H, and F, G are parallel. So it's got to be a trapezium. And we find out some things about this trapezium. We know that the length of E, F, so let's go, it's going to go E. Uh, maybe I won't put E there, actually, because I need E, H, and F, G to be parallel. E, H, and F, G to be parallel. There we go. I've got E, F, G, H. They are going in the correct order. So E, H, we know is root 18 plus 4. And FG is 10 root 50, 10 minus root 50. And it tells us that the perpendicular distance between them is root 8. Now, if you don't want to go straight into the calculation, you might find it helpful to do some simplifying here. So we know that root 8, we could simplify to 2 root 2. The root 18, we could simplify to a, what well, that's a root 9 and a root 2. That's going to be a 3 root 2. And the root 50 is a root 25 times root 2, which is 5 root 2. So I'm actually going to redraw that trapezium, because it might then make the next stage just a little bit simpler. So I can say that the height is actually root 8, which is 2 root 2. That's root 4 times root 2. The top is going to be 10 minus 5 root 2. I've replaced the root 50 with the 5 root 2. And on the bottom, we're going to have the root 18, which is 3 root 2 plus 4. Now I'm ready to find out the area of this trapezium. So I'm going to do the parallel sides added together. That's going to be my 10 minus 5 root 2 plus 3 root 2 plus 4. And that's all going to get divided by 2. And then I'm going to multiply afterwards by the height, which is 2 root 2. So the 10 and the 4 this time are going to make 14. And the minus 5 root 2 plus 3 root 2 is going to be minus 2 root 2. And that's being divided by 2, and afterwards we'll multiply by 2 root 2. So let's half these things that I've got here. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 2 root 2 divided by 2, well the 2 and the 2 give you a 1. So it's 7 minus root 2, and that's going to be multiplying by the 2 root 2. I didn't put the multiplication symbol in here, but we don't need to because we know that this is multiplying by this. So I'll start off by doing the 2 root 2 times the 7, which is going to give me 14 root 2. And then I'm going to do the 2 root 2 times the minus root 2. So that's the 2 times the root 2 times the root 2. That's the 2 times 2, which is 4. So we get 14 root 2 minus 4 centimetres. Let's check it's in the form that they want. Yep. So that means that A is equal to 14 and B is equal to minus 4. So I hope that this is something that's going to start being useful for you guys. I wanted to blend some topics together. This time I did thirds and trapeziums. There's going to be lots more in this playlist coming. So make sure you're subscribed so that you can get them all to help you with your exams.